If you use WebODM for precision mapping, the checkpoint workflow just got a lot faster. A new update just dropped to the WebODM Lightning system, which includes the ability to automate the use of checkpoints. It's a huge time saver for validating your maps, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to use it. But those clever folks over at WebODM also added a bunch of other improvements to the latest release. This includes easier imports of GCP information from your GNSS receiver, expansion of the EPSG codes that are available, and the ability to use separate and horizontal datums. These changes make it much easier to set up GCPs and checkpoints, validate the accuracy of the results, and ensure that the vertical results are just as accurate as the horizontal ones. At the time of making this video, these changes are only available in WebODM Lightning, but I expect that they will be pushed out to other products in the future. Let's get started. First, let's talk about checkpoints. Checkpoints are an essential tool for checking the accuracy of your maps. They're normally used alongside GCPs, but they can also be used to check the accuracy of a map, for example, one that was captured using RTK. I was recently running an experiment with a friend to compare the accuracy of the Mavic 3 Enterprise with the Matrice 4 Enterprise for RTK purposes, and I thought it'd be useful to show the complete process, particularly as it's not obvious how to do it if you're not using GCPs. In addition to showing how to do it step by step, I'll also provide all of the files you need to follow along and try it out for yourself. Just look for the link in the description. Please be aware that when I was setting up the checkpoints, we had a baseline of 16 miles, which is way outside the norm for accuracy. So we were not expecting the results to be super accurate, but it was gonna be accurate enough for our comparison purposes. But first, what's the difference between a GCP and a checkpoint? Ground control points, GCPs, are used by the software to process the images and create the map. They are the known points that anchor your map to the real world. Most importantly, they actually adjust the map to fit by moving, stretching, and warping the map. So using them to check your results isn't really a good idea. It's a bit like asking the same doctor to give you a second opinion. Checkpoints, on the other hand, are not used in processing. They are extra points that you measure on site, just like GCPs, but you only use them for verification. Since they are not used to adjust the map, you can be sure that if they're still in the correct location after the map is processed, then you have good results. Now that we understand that, let's go through the process of setting up and processing your map with checkpoints step by step. In this video, I'll cover what we did during the data collection, how to connect your checkpoints and GCP data to the photos taken by the drone, by tagging images with the target locations, how to process the data set in WebODM, including how to force it to use checkpoints, and how to review the results. For this experiment, we ran the mission over a small area near my home, capturing photos using both drones connected to the same cause network. I'm going to assume that you already have your checkpoint locations and images captured, and just focus on the processing in this video. If you don't know how to set GCPs and or run missions, I'll link to some videos in the description. Since we have all of the data already collected, the first thing that we need to do is to export the checkpoints from the MLED receiver. We use an MLED receiver. Your workflow might be slightly different, but for an MLED, I'm going to go to MLED Flow 360. And this is my project. It's called Checkpoint Demo. And it's got three checkpoints. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here. One is if I go into this one, I did my usual technique of measuring it multiple times. And we had an interesting thing here. I'm going to zoom in and show you. You can see that Two of these are very close to each other and one of them is off. If I measure them, I can select two points, so one and one A, and you can use this thing called inverse or distance, and that's a paid feature for MLED Flow 360. But if I compare these two points over on the right hand side, you can see it's 0.61 of a foot difference between one and one A, which is quite large. If I uncheck that and go one A to one B, you can see that our difference is just 0 0.09 of a foot. So that's much closer. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna export everything, but when I start using these checkpoints, I'm actually gonna ignore checkpoints one, two, and three, which I can tell you having already looked at this, if I do again, checkpoint two and three, you can see a half a foot difference versus 
2a and 2b, 0 0.09 again. So because 1, 2 and 3 seem to be off, I'm just going to ignore those. What I'm actually going to do is pull all this into a spreadsheet. I'm going to ignore checkpoints 1, 2 and 3, and then I'm going to average 1a to 1b, 2a to 2b, 3a to 3b. So that's a little nuance there. But anyway, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go to my checkpoint demo project. I'm going to select export and we're going to say CSV or columns export. And we're going to save that in this area called doc, doc downloads. So that's those exported. Now let's pull them into a spreadsheet and delete the ones we're not interested in and average the rest. So here we are in a spreadsheet. And like I said, I'm going to delete these ones because I don't want them because they were no good. And what we're going to do is I'm going to call this check one, check two and check three. One little note here, I had somebody that was using one of my previous videos and they had a space in the checkpoint name and that really messed things up. So don't do that. Just make sure there are no spaces, no tabs, anything like that in your checkpoint name. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to average these. So equals this one plus this one, that divided by two. And we can copy down this and copy this across. I'm going to paste these values only just to overwrite. And that way I can delete these ones. And now we have a clean set of data that's averaged between the two readings that I took. And I'm going to export that. Now that we have our average checkpoints, what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to come into WebODM Lightning. And we're going to start by going to the GCP interface here. This is a paid feature and you actually need to be a subscriber or have 1800 or more credits purchased within the last year to use it. But since I have that, we can use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our GCP file that we just created. And one nice thing here, this is one of the changes that's recently been made. Previously, you would have to put that into their template, but they've now changed it so that um, it will search the headings of any CSV file that you import and look for matches. And if it finds them, it will pull them in automatically. So this is a really nice change compared to what we had before. Another nice feature that they've changed is that EPSG codes now work for North America. So I was previously having to jump through some hoops to get 6527, but you'll see if I put 6527 in now, it says go to the next step. But wait, there's even more. Um, we now have the option to also specify the vertical datum, and that wasn't an option before. So you can see here, we've got this new option where you can specify a plus sign and then follow it with the vertical datum that you need. In my case, and ironically, it's exactly what's here, I need 6527 as the horizontal datum and 6360 geoid 18 as the vertical datum. And that's exactly what we've got. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this in over here, and now we can do go to next steps. And what you can see is we've got our checkpoints here, and now we're going to go through the process of attaching images to each of these checkpoints. And the way we do that is we're going to pick each one. So I'm going to click on this tag, browse to where the images are, which in my case is in this folder here. And we're going to select all of the images, wait for those to load. And we have filter by distance turned on. And I've got filter by distance set to 15. Might want to make that slightly larger so we get a couple more. Okay, 20. This is going to bring in anything that's close within any photos taken within 20 meters of where the point is. Now, in this case, I actually used paint that was on the ground. So the, the point that I'm actually using is right on the tip of this T here. So I'm going to click on that. Um, the downside to using painted markers on the ground is that you can't use the automated detect GCPs feature, but it has the advantage that I didn't have to do any actual placement of them. I just had to measure where they were. I just need to find each of these. Where did this go? Okay, and then save changes. So that's five images checked for checkpoint number one. And as you can see, it's turned green. If I had less than three, it would have a color, but it would be yellow. Now we're going to do checkpoint number two, similar kind of thing. It looks like we've got more of these, so I can reduce the number of the distance, filter by distance. It's 15, maybe even 10. It's too much. 15. Okay. 
and my checkpoint here was actually on the corner of this painted sign here so it's going to be right on that corner there so one there right on that corner and what we're doing here is we are literally just connecting the images where exactly in the image ties in with the checkpoint so i'm going to just leave it at that i think we've got enough i'm going to do save changes since i have six checkpoint number three it turned out when i looked into it uh, i actually did it based on this manhole cover but as you can see the definition on the manhole cover is pretty pretty vague so i don't really feel like i can use this as a checkpoint so i'm actually just gonna i'm actually just gonna leave checkpoint three out it's just a test just showing the process anyway so i think we're good so now we're going to do go to next step this is the file that we're going to download and i'm going to do download the file and we are going to call it gcp list we're just going to call it that now that we've done that we can go back to the main web odm lightning page and we go over to the cloud platform and this is where we're going to process all of this data so i'm going to do add project checkpoint demo and we're going to select images and gcps so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to go into the folder where my photos are and i already have a gcp file there but i don't want that one because i want the one that we just created so i'm going to select all of the images click open and i can also now select again go over to the one that i just created and add that okay um, i usually use default here but in this case because we want to use checkpoints and we haven't used GCPs, I need to make an edit here, which is if I go into this edit and I find GPS, there's an option here that says force GPS. If I don't have GCPs and I just have checkpoints, it won't actually do anything with the checkpoints unless I say force GPS. So I'm going to click this to say enable and save, but everything else should be the same. Now click review and start processing and what it's now going to do is it's going to upload all the images ready for processing into an ortho and at the same time it's going to upload the gcp file and it's going to use that during the processing and because we only use checkpoints what it's actually going to do is it's going to calculate the checkpoint versus the uh, locations in the photos and give us a, an amount of error now as i mentioned earlier we do expect some error because my baseline in this case was 16 miles and that's far too far for uh, accurate use of a baseline but it is good enough for the test that we were running and it's good enough to show you how the process works and that's it it's processing so we're going to leave that to run and come back once it's complete so here we are now that it's completed we can go over to here to download assets and we can download everything but here i'm just going to download the quality report and what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and there's a section that says G G gps details and down there it has ground control points and we can see that checkpoint one is off by 0 0.02 of a meter checkpoint two is off by 0 0.04 of a meter and so on and crucially and this is a big change with the addition of the new vertical datum our checkpoint error in the Z, which is the vertical axis, um, has actually been improved. When I first did this, the Z error was off by many meters and it was, uh, it was completely wrong. So very good that they've made that change. Anyway, that's the whole process front to back. I hope you found that useful. Please do remember, I never expected these results to be completely accurate, but being off by, this is 2.9 centimeters and this is even less four centimeters five centimeters that's um actually pretty good considering we had a 16 mile baseline anyway i hope you found that useful stay tuned i'll see you in the next video